Number five then from the 2016 Advanced Air Maths. There we go, proof by induction. And it's the wee summation formula type. Lovely jubbly. Four marks. Well, off we go then. Notice N is a natural number, so it's starting at one, so that's the what you test for. Test if it's true at the start. Test for N equals one. So we'll just take the left hand side. If N is one, you're just going from one to one, so it's only the first term, which will be one times 3 minus 1, which equals 2. Left hand side, I'm just doing that to save space. I know I'm going to need a lot for the rest. Right hand side would just be 1 squared times 1 plus 1, which equals 2. So now you can see left hand side equals right hand side. So that means the important bit is true for n equals 1. Now you introduce the inductive hypothesis. Let's just say we assume it's true. Don't say it's, it's a bit childish. Assume true for n equals k, some average number k. That would mean that popping k into that, r equals 1 to k into this, should give me k squared times k plus 1. You don't know if that's true, but that's not the point. What you want to check is, if that is true, does it produce the required result for the next step for k plus 1? So that's what you consider next. Consider n equals k plus 1. So that means you write down this expression with n replaced by k plus 1. So we've got sigma r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r times 3r minus 1 would be, since that just says add up all the terms from r is 1 to k plus 1, that would just be the same as add up all the terms from r is 1 to k and then finally add on that final term. Now add on the last term when r finally reaches the top and it reaches k plus 1. So that means the last term would be this thing in here, because that's each term. R would be k plus 1, and that would be 3 times k plus 1. Ooh, just making it minus 1. Now you call in the inductive hypothesis. That's a critical step. You call in the inductive hypothesis, so this can get replaced by that. So you've got k squared times k plus 1, plus, and we'll just tidy this up a bit, k plus 1 times, and that's 3k, plus 3 minus 1, minus 2. Then, pain's getting a bit blunt, so we give it a little sharpen. Eh, take it a common factor, k plus 1, and that'll be, whoops, k squared plus 3k, and that was a plus 2. Oh, plus 2. As long as you notice these wee slips before you reach the end, factorise that. K, K, plus 1, plus 2. And you can see you're getting there because you're looking for something squared and a different one, which is one more. So that is it. So K plus 1 squared, and just emphasise that that's one more by splitting that 2. So K plus 1, plus 1, which is the required result. I'll just write that down. Required result for N equals K plus 1. Now you can just finish it off. So what did this demonstrate? This demonstrated this. It demonstrated that if it was true for n equals k, it meant it was true for n equals k plus 1. But since it was true for n equals 1, then by this little stepping stone, it's going to be true for all n. But sometimes you say that you have to put this in by induction. It's true for whatever it says for all n in the set of natural numbers. And there you go.